before anything else, it's worth thinking and discussing about what is machine learning and why do we need uh, machine learning? Um, it's not a trivial question because there has been so much progress in algorithmics, in computer science in general, that we really use computers for an enormous amount of problems today. And uh, they tend to be very efficient at what they do. Um, and so in what kind of occasions our algorithmics fail and standard traditional solutions um, based on algorithmics are not anymore enough? So here are some examples in which we need a different type of computation. Um, in this kind of world that we live today where we are surrounded by uh, data, uh, and this data can come from, for example, the widespread use of um, uh, computational devices, computers and uh, uh, phones and uh, wearable devices and uh, wireless communication, that really collects data about everything we do, where we do it, when we do it, um, next to whom we are, uh, and, and so on. And in this kind of world, we are both producers and consumers of data. And the thing is that data is not really random. It has structure. Uh, events um, happen uh, because of some context that, that just surrounded them. Um, and so, for example, customer behavior uh, is, is something that really you can understand from, from their data. And so in this world of really big data, we need a sort of a big theory to extract that structure from data. And the goal in doing that is really to understand the process, understand why something happened, uh, when it happened, and especially the interest is in making predictions for the future. And one aspect that really has fueled these um, developments in machine learning, in addition to the availability, availability of big data, is really the cheaper and cheaper computational power. Um, for example, GPUs, but not only GPUs. Um, take, for example, the mobile phones that have processors that are more powerful than what you had in a computer, uh, say, uh, 10 years ago. And so the question is, why do we need to learn? Um, and, and what exactly is, is learning? Um, and we have this notion of, of algorithm. And, and an algorithm is really a, a sequence of instructions that should be carried out to transform the input to an output. Um, but for some tasks, we don't really have an algorithm, despite really decades of research. And some of these tasks are really things that we as humans uh, can do effortlessly and even without being aware of how we do them. Uh, for example, we can recognize a person from a photograph and it doesn't really matter if that person um, you know, has gained a little bit of weight or uh, they, uh, they have uh, uh, a beard or, or they, they started wearing glasses. Um, another example is that we can move in a crowded room without really hitting objects or people. Um, we can drive a car, uh, we can play uh, games, uh, and, and we can hold conversations in a foreign language. And, and so we would like really computers to learn how to do these things as well and uh, assist us in, in a number of um, uh, problems. And what is it really that we talk about when we talk about learning, machine learning? Um, think, for example, about a supermarket chain that's selling uh, really thousands of goods to thousands or hundreds of thousands of, of customers, either in their stores or uh, through, for example, a virtual store over the internet. And very often these supermarket chains uh, make you an offer to have a sort of a loyalty card. And based on that loyalty card, they are able to offer you some uh, special prices sometimes, or um, maybe some uh, uh, cash back sometimes. Um, and what they are gaining through those loyalty programs is really the connection between what you buy and your characteristics. Um, so for example, you they would know through that loyalty card your um, 
age and uh, gender and uh, address and maybe level of income. And with each transaction, uh, they, will, they will learn about you, um, what kind of good you, good you bought, uh, how expensive they were, how often do you buy, um, whether there are different products that you, you buy in, in different shops or in different times of the year. And really it's this kind of data that, that typically amounts to a lot of information and is being collected uh, every day. And obviously you, you get out of these some special rewards if you are opting for, uh, for these um, loyalty programs. But what the supermarket chain gets is really the possibility to learn the rules of customer behavior so that it's able to predict which customer is likely to buy which product and through that way to maximize sales and profit. And um, also on your side, uh, maybe the, there is a way out of this kind of big data to uh, find a set of products that best matches um, your needs. Um, and, and think about it, uh, for example, in terms of uh, watching Netflix or listening to, to Spotify, where you indicate a few times what kind of movies you'd like to watch or what kind of music you would like to listen to. And uh, based on big data about other customers, um, those um, uh, systems are, are going to be able to predict what other things you'd like to watch or listen to according to your taste. And maybe according to a taste that you yourself cannot really define, but they will be able to learn about you and, and feed you things that are really well fit to your taste. And so the point here is that data is, is really uh, cheap uh, very often and, and abundant, but the knowledge is, is what you are looking for out of this data. The knowledge is, is what's expensive and, um, and, and scarce. And uh, what you want to do is you want to build a model that's a good and useful approximation to the data. Um, and it, it might be that that data is explained by, by very complicated uh, you know, uh, relationships in the uh, details of a customer. Uh, but, but what we want to do is some sort of simplified uh, but, but good and, and useful approximation um, uh, about, um, uh, for example, customer behavior in, in terms of the examples that I, I've used. And the solution to this task is not evident. We, we don't really know exactly which people are likely to buy this particular ice cream flavor or, or the next book of this particular author or, or, or watch this movie or uh, you know, visit this city or, or click, click this link. Um, and it's also really so that customer behavior changes in time and depends a lot of, by, by geographic location. But we do know that this is not completely random. Um, people don't really go to supermarkets and, and buy things at random. Um, for example, when they buy beer, they, very often they also buy chips and, and, and they, they tend to buy ice cream in summer and maybe hot chocolate in, in, in winter. So there are certain patterns in the data and the goal is to uh, learn these patterns and, and, and use them to create value. Um, so what is machine learning? Well, machine learning is really uh, about the computational methods that are using experience to improve performance um, of, uh, of an algorithm or to make accurate predictions. And um, what I mean by experience is the past information or past data available to the learner. And the crucial aspect that you have uh, throughout machine learning is that you've got to have as much data as possible and really of as high quality as, as possible. And, and based on that, you are going to be able to uh, answer uh, some of these um, uh, problems uh, we, we have in machine learning. Um, so here are some examples of, of machine learning problems. Um, one example is uh, predict the topic of an unseen document. And, and a very good example of, of this kind of problem and, and how to solve um, or, or seeing a solution to this problem is really Google News. Um, if you if you are not a subscriber to, to Google, Google News, you simply can just go to your browser and uh, type uh, news.google.com and you will see something um, similar to, to what I have on this slide. Uh, you will see a bunch of um, headlines. And in those headlines, 
you will see a number of topics and, and here is for example one topic that was um, in my google news feed today uh, there is a uh, uh, hurricane laura hitting the us and uh, under this headline google is grouping a number of sources uh, for this hurricane and all of them have to do with uh, with this hurricane and each one of them is coming from different sources this one is coming from abc news and there is something nola.com and there is something from the weather channel and there is something from yahoo news and in, in, if i were scrolling down this page there would be then the uh, next topic which uh, today is the um, us election and, and there would be other topics uh, as well so so what google news does in the background is is really scanning the internet for documents and then somehow groups these documents under common headers and, and then reports them to you in the form of such um, headlines in your um, uh, in your news feed here is a, a, another example um, and, and that is that you would like to predict the price of a house um, and uh, you have this uh, uh, realization that the house might depend in a way that that you really cannot determine but you you have a clear idea that the price of the house is going to depend obviously on its size and um, the number of bedrooms and the number of bathrooms and uh, whether, it, whether it has a yard or not and, and how big that yard is, whether you own the yard or, or it's rented or it's shared with other houses. But it could also depend on, for example, the distance to the nearest bus stop or the distance to the, ne to the local school or the distance to the nearest supermarket. But even more than that, maybe it would depend on the criminality rate of a, a five kilometer radius neighborhood, but it, it could even depend on other things that are not even so visible. For example, it, it could depend on the um, average income um, per family in, in, in that neighborhood. Uh, and so the task would be to predict the price of a house depending on a number of features. Um, related to that house and, and to, to its location. Here is another example. You have a, um, a computer tomograph scan um, about a um, tumor, for example, a breast cancer tumor, and, and you would like to predict the grade of that tumor based on the scan. And uh, there are a number of things that obviously will help determine that, that grade, and you just don't know um, how, how are they combined together to determine the grade of that tumor. But you do know that important factors are the size of the tumors, um, the thickness, but also maybe the, the age of the patient and uh, the family cancer history. And, and the goal is to combine all of these aspects um, into a uh, predictive mechanism about the grade of that tumor. And uh, this is something that I've alluded to uh, before, predict a new product that, that, that a shopper may want to buy. And so in the next videos, we will discuss in a little bit more detail some of the most common types of machine learning problems.